in most Haggadis, prior to the recital of the four questions, it says in very small letters, V'kan haben shoyel man And now, the child or the son asks the man nishtana. There are other versions that says now the child or the son asks ma what. But the way it states in the writings of Rab David Levot and also it's brought down in the uh, Chabad Agoda is that now the son recites ma nishtana. What does that mean? So the Rebbe Rishab says that tonight on Pesach the Ma is Nishtana. Ma means what? Nishtana is different. Tonight the what is different. What is what? What is Ma? Ma is Bittel. Ma represents self-nullification. In other words, throughout the entire year, we're egotistic. Throughout the year, we're selfish. But tonight is different. Tonight, the Ma is Nishtana. Tonight, it's totally different because we are totally dedicated to God. There's another interpretation found in the Zohar. And that is, the Zohar says in Zohar Chodesh, that on the night of Shemurim, on the night when God watches the Jewish people, when the Shekhinah is redeemed, so the Ma is enlightened. At that time when the Ma is enlightened, which is God's full name, at that time the child should ask his father, Ma Nishtana. What does it mean that the Ma is the full name of God? So we know that the name of God is the Yudke Vavke, the Tetragrammaton. <clears throat> if you spell out the Tetragrammaton, the Yudke Vavke, so the Yud is Yud Vav Dalit, the He is He Alif, the Vav is Vav Alif Vav, and then the He is again He Alif. So in other words, God's name alone, the four letter name, is 26, the gematria of 26. If you spell it out, it equals 45. 45 is the same gematria as the word Ma, what? So tonight, the night of Pesach, the Ma, the Ma is enlightened. The Ma is illuminated because, in other words, the name of God is complete. When the name of God is complete, then the child asks his father, Ma Nishtan. In other words, how do we access this power of godliness? How do we access this power of Ma? By the fact that we become Ma. By the fact that we dedicate ourselves to God, we now have the ability to access the higher reality, the higher Ma, which is God's ineffable name, the way it is enlightened by Ma, the way it's spelled out completely, Yud K Vav K. I heard a story once that a Yid came to the Rebbe and asked for a bracha for a child. So the Rebbe said to him, you should think right before the Manishtana. When you say the words, Kan Habain Shoyal, now the child should ask. You should have in mind, now is the time to ask for a child. And that year he was blessed with a child. The Rebbe Rishab tells his son, the Fidik Rebbe, what do we need to think about throughout the entire Seder? 
And he said, what we have to think about throughout the entire Seder is to be a mensch. And God will help that we will truly be a mensch. And don't think about material things, think about spiritual things. In other words, throughout the Seder, V'chan ben Shoyal, what should we ask? Ma, we have to ask for Bittu, we have to ask that I become nothing. That we, we ask God, we, He should give us the strength to go out of our limitations, out of our Egypt, which etymologically means borders and constraints. And we should truly become Ma, nullified to God's will. So these are three different approaches to the meaning now the child should ask Manishtana. So now we go to the four questions. What are the four questions? In the Mishnah and Yerushalmi, in the Alphys, in the Rosh, in the Rambam, the Rasag, the Barbanel, the Priyats Chaim, and also the uh, Haggadah based on the Alter Rebbe, all of these places, the order of four questions goes as follows. First of all, Manishtana why is tonight different? He goes on to say the first question is that all other nights we don't even dip once, but tonight we dip twice. The second question is all other nights we eat chametz or matzah, Tonight, only matzah. The third question is, all other nights, we eat all types of vegetables, but tonight we eat mara. The fourth question is, all other nights we eat sitting up straight or reclining. But tonight, we all eat reclining. So let's understand this on, on five levels, on Pshat, the simple level, Drush, Remez, Drush, Soid, and Chassidus. On the simple level, on the level of Pshat, why is it that we have these four questions in this order? So the answer is that it's based on the order of the events. In other words, the first event of the Seder is to take the vegetable, the onion, or the celery, or the parsley, and you put it into salt water. That's the first thing the child sees. The second event is the eating of the matzah. The third event is the eating of murrah. And the fourth one, which is the reclining, even though it happens at the very beginning of the Seder, the number one, Number one, the mitzvah of the four cups of wine is only rabbinic. It's not a Torah law. In contrast to the matzah and the murrah, which is based on a Torah law. So the idea of reclining, according to the Gura, is something that was added later as a question, only after people stopped reclining when they ate. <coughs> Therefore, it became a question. But during the time that people reclined while they ate, there was really no question, why do we recline? So, in other words, the order of events is first dipping the karpas into salt water, then the matzah, then the murrah, and then we ask the fourth question, which came later. That's the level of pshat. What is the remez? What is the hint? In other words, how does the four questions hint to the ultimate redemption? So we say like this, Manishtana Laila Mikala Leilas. What is this night different than all other nights? Night is exile, day is redemption. So the question is, why is this night, this final gallus, and this redemption different than all the other exiles that preceded it? And the answer is that this exile, 
will have a redemption that's very different. That after this redemption, there'll no longer be another exile. Why? So the first thing is that because this night we dip twice. When it comes to refinement, there are two types of refinement. There's refinement of the body and refinement of the soul. The body means the way I eat, the way I drink, the way I sleep. The soul means the way I think, the way I study Torah, the way I pray. In previous exile, sometimes the body was refined, sometimes the soul was refined. But this exile, both the body and the soul is going to be refined. The idea of to immerse represents to go into a mikveh, to be refined. And therefore, both the body and the soul is going to be refined. And therefore, there will no longer be an exile after this redemption. The second thing is, all other nights, we ate chametz or matzah. But tonight is only matzah. Chametz is leaven. Leaven is ego. Matzah is flat. Represents self-nullification. Humility. In previous exiles, there were times that we were humble and there were times that we were arrogant. But this exile, every Jew will be totally humble before God. And therefore, there will no longer be Another exile after this redemption. The third, the question is, all other nights, we eat all different types of greens, all different types of vegetables. Tonight we eat murrah. What is murrah? Murrah is bitter, bitter herbs. So for example, if a person is occupied in something that he likes to do. Writing, singing, dancing, architecture, art, the Met, whatever it might be. When you're involved in doing such a thing that you really enjoy, and now someone says, come over here, let's go eat. What do you mean I want to eat? I don't want to eat. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm excited about what I'm doing. Don't slip me away now to eat. I don't want to eat. I'm not hungry. No, no, but everybody's eating, now you have to eat. I don't want to eat. I'm writing, I'm, I'm painting, I'm singing. Don't hack me a chinik. Let me do what I have to do. <laughs> so when you get pulled away, that's called murder. Even though you're eating, and even though you're drinking the finest foods, at that moment there's a bitterness because you're being pulled away from what you have to do. So we're told that a Mashiach will come. The preoccupation of the entire world will be to know God. Every human being, Jew and non-Jew alike, is going to be preoccupied with the knowledge of God, with the study of Torah, with examining and understanding scientifically and rationally and spiritually what is God and who is God, and understanding it on all different levels. And therefore, anything which is less than that is going to be murder. Anything less than that is going to be bitter, even eating and drinking. We're not going to want to eat and drink. Why? We're preoccupied in something much loftier, something much greater, something much more exciting, something much more fulfilling, something much more holier. And therefore, tonight, this exile is murders about the bitter herbs. And finally, the fourth question is, throughout all the other nights, we sit or we recline, but tonight we only recline, or all of us recline. The idea of sitting represents tranquility. When you're running around, there's motion, you get tired, you get excited, you get anxious. When you sit down, you calm down. But when you lie down, when you recline, there's even a greater level of, of tranquility, a greater level of peace. So sitting represents temporary peace. Lying down is, is something which is more permanent. So he says that the other exiles, after the exiles, we had some sort of peace, some sort of tranquility. Some was temporary, and some was more permanent. But ultimately, after all the exiles, and after all the redemptions, we went back into the exiles again. 
However, this redemption is going to be kulanu musubin. This redemption is going to be entirely musubin because we're going to recline. It's going to be a permanent redemption. And there will no longer be an exile after this redemption. So this is the hint. Now these four questions are asking why is this exile and redemption different than all other previous exiles and redemptions? And the answer is that after this there will no longer be another exile. What is Drush? The Drush is the halacha here. What do we learn from this? What are we supposed to do now? about these four questions. If you think about it, there's a very serious question here, and that is why is it in truth that the first of the four questions, according to, to most of the, the classical commentators, is why do we dip twice tonight at the Seder? At the beginning of the Seder, we dip the greens into salt water, and then later, the second time is we put the murrah the herbs into charoses. And then again, with the Hillel sandwich, we also do it into charoses. But that's the same concept of taking the murrah and putting it into the charoses. Now, why is that the first thing that is asked? If we are dealing here with importance, so the most important thing really tonight, Pesach, is the matzah. The matzah is Torah law, a halacha in Torah midoraisa. We have to eat matzah tonight on Pesach. Murrah nowadays, even though its origins is from the Torah, but murrah today is only rabbinic, because according to the Torah, when is murrah an obligation? Only when you eat murrah together with the Paschal lamb. If you don't have a Paschal lamb, technically you don't have to eat murrah. Come along the rabbis and say you should eat murrah also. So really the most important thing on the night of Pesach is the matzah. That should be the first question. The second thing is murrah. The third most important thing is to recline the subim because the entire seder, the entire evening is all about freedom. And that's the concept, the theme of reclining like the kings, like the queens. So therefore, it's about reclining. The fourth is the concept of to matbilin, to dip. The idea of dipping is only a minhok. You don't find the Torah that on Pesach you have to dip. It doesn't say anything about dipping. It's a minhok bi'almot. It's a general custom that we do, that we first dip, first of all, the, the greens into salt water. It's a minhok. There's no mitzvah to do this. And the whole reason why we do this is to arouse the curiosity of the children. Dad, what's going on over here? What kind of crazy thing is this? We're taking a celery, taking a potato, taking an onion, we're putting it into salt water. And we don't put gloves on beforehand. We wash our hands before, but we're supposed to put our hands, use our hands, not a fork. All year round, you tell me I should use a fork, be proper. Tonight, no, no, don't use a fork. Use your hand. What's going on over here? Why is tonight different than all the other nights? It's about a minhug. It's a custom to arouse the curiosity of the child. And yet this is the first one, not the last one. <laughs> so perhaps we say that the order of the four questions is based on what the child sees. So if it's about what the child sees, then really the first question should be Masubin. Why do we recline tonight? <laughs> because you make the Kiddush, and right away you recline. So the first thing the child is seeing is Masubin, reclining. And that's the fourth question, not the first. And yet we say that in the Mishnah and the Yerushalmi, and all the great commentaries say, no, the first question should be, why do we dip twice tonight? So the Rebbe says that the answer is as follows, that the Pesach Seder is all about the child asking questions. It's all about educating your children. And the way we are to educate your children is such a way that we make an indelible impression in our child. 
when you make an indelible impression in the child, the child never forgets. If the child goes to school and he falls asleep every day and he's bored, he's not going to remember. The way you create an everlasting effect on the child is to make sure that it's an indelible impression for all times. What does the child remember more than everything is the minhog, is the Jewish customs. Yes, it's true, we study Torah, and it's true we do a lot of mitzvahs. But what really distinguishes the Jewish nation from all the other nations, not so much that we study Torah and do mitzvahs, but what distinguishes us is also how we eat and how we drink and how we sleep and how we marry and how we do normal bodily everyday functions. Here too we see a difference. And this is where the customs come in. We're talking about eating. And yet all of a sudden we take a piece of parsley or we take uh, an onion and we take uh, some sort of vegetable and we put it into the salt water. And this arouses the child's curiosity. It, the child questions this and he remembers this and it has an impression upon him. And therefore the Torah is teaching us how to teach a child. It's all about the impressions, all about the customs. Mine Yisrael Torihi. A Jewish custom is Torah. It's not a simple thing, yeah, it's not so important, it's only a custom. Says the Gemara, the custom of Jewish women is Torah. It's not just a custom, this is Torah. Not only is this Torah, this is the first thing that we're going to put into the Haggadah. This is the first thing the child is going to ask. Why? It's going to have an indelible, everlasting impression. And that's why we start off with Matbilim. It's all about the custom. A mitzvah is very important. Torah study is very important. That's who we are. But what inspires us, that's the minhag, that's the custom, the change, the difference, the unique approach. That which is inquisitive, that which stirs the heart, which, which inspires the mind, that is what the child remembers. And therefore, Gam Kiyaskin Lo Yasrimenu, therefore, even when he grows old, he will not forget. Till today, I remember my grandfather said it very vividly. How at the beginning of the Seder, before we started, he used to give out these uh, walnuts and, and these almonds. I say, Zaidi, why are you doing this for? He goes, oh, good question. <laughs> good question. It's brought down in the code of Jewish law. You do things to arouse the child's mind. And you're supposed to give out nuts before the Seder. So these customs, Mini Yisrael, that has given the Jewish people the strength to endure all the exiles. And that is why we start off the four questions with this specific question of why do we dip twice tonight? So we spoke about Pshat and the Rebbe's and Drush. What does Soid, what does Kabbalah have to say about these four questions? It's brought down in the writings of the Arizal that these four questions allude to the four worlds. The first question is the world of Asiya, the world of action. The second is Yitzira, the world of formation. The third is the world of Bria, the world of creation. And finally, the fourth question is the world of Atsilus, the world of emanation. But what does all of this mean? So let's go to Chassidus. What does Chassidus say about this? The teaching of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, and he says like this. What is the world of Atsilos about? What is this world of emanation about? It's a very spiritual world and a holy world and a godly world, but what does it mean practically? He says the world of Atsilos is a world that there's no Ra, there's no evil whatsoever. In Bria there's a little Ra, in Yitzira there's more Ra, in the world of action is mostly Ra, mostly evil. But in the world of Atsilos there's no Ra, there's no evil whatsoever. Comes the Jew, the Ben, to the Seder, and he starts to read the Agoda, and he reads the questions. 
Mikal, Leila is tonight, my ma, my, my dedication is totally different, I'm dedicated to God, how much so? That I'm able to leave the world of Asi, I'm able to leave the world of Yitzir, I'm able to leave the world of Bria, and I, and I go to the world of Atzilus, I'm one with God, there's no evil whatsoever. And the question is, what does that mean? How can that be? I know myself better. I know who I am. I know what I think. I know what I did 10 minutes ago. I know what I did yesterday. I know my, my spiritual place. I'm nowhere close to Atsilus. I know how I think. I know how I act. I know what I do. And yet tonight we say Manishtana. And we say the four questions. Tonight, I'm an Atsilus. I have no evil whatsoever. How could it be? Comes along Hasidus and Hasidus says, you should know that what happened tonight is a repeat of what happened 2,000 or 3,300 and some odd years ago. In the year 2448, Avodim we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt. And we were just like the Egyptians. They served idols and we served idols. And we were on 49 levels of impurity. So much so that God cannot send any angel to take us out of Egypt. He couldn't send a shliach. He couldn't send a malach. He couldn't send a saraf. As the Maral translates, he couldn't send Angel Michael, he couldn't send Angel Gabriel, he couldn't even send Angel Matat, Metetram. God himself had to come and pull us out of Golos because if an angel would have gone down to Egypt, the angel themselves would have been pulled in to the impurity of Egypt. That's how bad it was. And yet, what happened? On this night, God himself schlepped us out of the 49 levels of impurity and he himself brought us to the level of Atsilus, this level of perfection, this level of harmony, this level of being one with God. So just like it happened then, every year it's a replay. Every year it's happening over and over and over again. As Darizal says, these holidays are remembered and they are actualized. It's not only celebration and a memory of something that happened thousands of years ago. No, tonight we are leaving Egypt. Tonight we are entering into Atsilus. It doesn't matter how or what or where I was 25 minutes ago. Right now we're at the Seder. Right now each one of us our ma has changed. The ma nishtanu. Who we are, what we are, is different. The ma changed. Tonight, kulonu musubim, we are all reclined. We are all in the world of Atsilus. There is no potential for evil. We cannot do no evil. We can't see evil. We can't hear evil. We are one with God. That is what Chassidah says about the four, the four questions. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, who is supposed to ask the Manishtan? And the answer is that really, you take the youngest child at the table. Why? Why do you take the youngest child at the table? Why not the oldest person at the table? So the answer is because now you throw the Oyevoy. The God says, Israel is like my child, and therefore I love him. When a parent has a child, one is a baby, an infant, six months old, a year old, or one is 20 year old. Yeah, the 20 year old could be a rocket scientist. And the 20 year old could be a big superstar. And it could be an athlete. And could be making 20, 30 million dollars a year. And the parent is very impressed. But the love is based on the child's actions. The love is based on the child's performance. I love him because he's so successful. I love him because he's so smart. I love him because he's a self-made man. 
So the love is, is a limited love. It's based on the child's performance. But the love that a parent has to a baby is a love that's unlimited. Oh, he's so brilliant, he said, gaga, gaga. Amazing. <laughs> he's going right to Harvard. <laughs> who, is, who are you kidding over here? Every baby says, gaga, gaga. Oh, my child, he's amazing. Look how he smiles. Every baby smiles the same way. But the love that a parent has for a child is unlimited. It's an unlimited love. It's not based on the child's action and performance and accomplishments. It's an essential love that's beyond time and space. An essential love beyond intellect. An essential love beyond performance. And that is why, specifically on the night of Pesach, we want a child to say the Manishtan. Because through this child saying Manishtan, we awaken the deepest chambers of God. A place that God's love is unlimited. Because look, my baby is saying the Manishtan. I love him. And that pours forth all of God's blessings to the Jewish people. And the Fidik Rebbe takes it a step further and he says, it's not only a child in years, but also a child spiritually. A child spiritually means you could be 70, 80 years old, but you didn't put on film today. Or you didn't say a bracha before you ate, you didn't study Torah, and you didn't give charity, and you're not following the Torah laws. You might think maybe that child shouldn't come to the Seder. On the contrary, that's the child that you say the Manishtana. For when God sees that child saying the Manishtana, God says, I love him not because he puts on film. I love him not because he studies Torah. I love him not because he gave $20 million to the synagogue. I love him because he's my baby. And that love is an unlimited love. And that is the love we want to awaken within God on the night of Pesach. When God himself comes down and redeems us. When every Jew is in the world of Atzillus. When every Ma has changed. We want to elicit God's unlimited love. They tell a famous story. We've said it numerous times in the past. The story of the Shpola That That um, it's customary at the beginning of the Seder to say... And the Tata Kum Tehem Fushul, Tafa Gleich Machen Kiddish, Kedea, the Kinder, Zolnit, Ein Schlafin, and Kenan Zog in the Manishtana. So, right before the father makes the Kiddish, you say, when the father comes home from Shul, he should right away make the Kiddish, so that the children should not fall asleep and they should be able to recite the Manishtana. I remember reciting this in my grandfather's home, and my parents' home, and until today in our own home, we always start off the Seder by saying before the Kiddush, when the Tata comes to the from Shul, that for gleich machen Kiddush, kedei the Kinder is only the Einschlaf and the Song in the Manishtan. So in time of the Shpala Zeder, his kid comes back from Yeshiva, and they're about to start the Seder, they came home from Shul, and he says, no, no, say something. And they say, yeah. When the father comes home from shul, he should make Kiddush. When the father comes home from shul, he should make Kiddush right away. Yeah, and now what? That's it. You don't know anything else? No. Your teacher didn't teach you the next part? No. It's okay. The Shepardah Zayd himself continued this passage. And he said, so that the children should not fall asleep and recite the Manishtan. The next day, he meets the Rebbe, he meets the teacher in the shul. He says, what's going on over here? He only taught my, my kids half the story. Why didn't you teach them the whole phrase? He says, well, it's a long phrase, it's a long night, I wanted to shorten it a little bit, you shouldn't have to say the whole thing. He says, don't you know that every detail in the Seder is holy? Every minog, every custom, every aspect of the Seder is in the holiest and the highest worlds. We have no right to tamper with it. Why do you mean you wanted to shorten the Seder? Who gave you the right to do that? Let me explain you what this is all about. 
He says, before we make Yiddish, when we come home from Shul, we say, when the Tate comes to him from Shul, that's a gleich lachen Kiddush. When the father comes home from Shul, he should right away make Yiddish. Who is this? This is God. God is our father. God goes to all the synagogues and he sees that all his children are praying. The Davin mighty and they say Hallel, they praise God. And even though they work so hard a whole week and a whole month scrubbing their houses and cleaning their houses and changing the dishes and buying new pots and ridding the entire house from chametz and burning the chametz and buying matzah for thousands of dollars a pound. And he sees how his kids went to shul and they still praise God even though it's a difficult holiday. It's a very difficult holiday, yet they're praising God, they're singing Hallel and Shul. So we say, when the Tatakum behave from Shul, when God comes back from all these Shuls, he should right away make Kiddush. What's Kiddush? Kiddush is Kiddushin. He should marry the Jewish people. Not let us walk around, but he should marry the Jewish people. Why? Why should he marry us right, right away? Give us the ring. Why tonight? Why this moment? Today as the kinder is on the Einstein and so that the children should not fall asleep. Because if you're not going to do it right away, God, we're going to fall into the slumber of exile. And we're not going to say, Manishtana, we're not going to ask, why is this exile longer than all the other exiles? We had an exile for 70 years, we had an exile for 400 years, but now this exile is more than 1900 years. And we have to ask God Manishtana, why is this night different than all the other nights? Why is this exile longer than all the previous exiles? And by the fact that we ask God this question, God has to respond, God has to marry us, God has to take us out of goals. And therefore he lifted up his hands, the Shvul Zayda with tears, he said, God, your children ask the Manishtana, now marry us and take us out of this goals. And so we hope and pray, L'shana Abab Yerushalayim, as we conclude the Seyda next year in Jerusalem. As the Rebbe said many times, it doesn't mean we have to wait until next year to go to Jerusalem. We should go to Jerusalem tonight. And therefore automatically by next year Pesach will be in Jerusalem. And there we will eat from the Paschal lamb and from all the, the korbanes and sacrifices. Together with all the other children of God from all four corners of the world. With the Kambi of Mashiach speedily in our days. Amen.